Welcome everyone. Thank you for attending our annual recognition celebration. My name is Carla Tennis and I'm the executive director for Porchlight. I know many of you are longtime volunteers and supporters of Porchlight, but for those of you who are new, Porchlight is the largest provider of affordable housing and services to homeless persons in Dane County. We do that through managing six core programs. We provide a continuum of services so that we can help people where they are at. We provide services at the men's drop-in shelter, outreach, eviction prevention, day resource center for homeless persons who have mental health issues, affordable housing, and employment and training programs. This would not be possible if it wasn't for your long-time support. This is your first time attending our annual recognition celebration. This is Porchlight's largest fundraiser of the year. Our goal today, to raise $150,000 to renovate several affordable housing units. These units will be available to men and women who are staying in our shelters, who are employed, and who cannot afford to live in our community. But first we will hear from Preston Patterson, our longtime shelter manager. He's going to walk us through what we do every night to keep our guests safe and healthy. We'll also hear from a few guests who will share their nightly experience. The beginning of every day, usually about half of our guests show up on a bus coming from the Beacon. Uh, they make two rounds uh, to pick people up off the bus. Uh, if it's a real busy day, they make, make three rounds. So we get half of our uh, population each night coming from the Beacon bus, and then uh, the, the remainder are our walk-up guests that come and sign in to the shelter. Very first thing that happens when they come in the door, they are uh, assessed for COVID or COVID symptoms. They go through uh, the 11 symptoms that uh, they look out for uh, that are common to COVID, and their temperature is taken. If they are symptomatic, they are diverted to a different part of the shelter uh, where we have uh, our nurse disrupted. Uh, it's a virtual nurse that we uh, talk through through a tablet. So they're the ones that decide if the person, uh, if the, the symptoms they have are severe enough for them to be, go to a respite hotel uh, where they are tested. And once they get the negative result, they can return to shelter. So after they um, come to the health assessment screen, they, are, they put the belongings on a, a desk where we have a security guard uh, who will go through their belongings uh, with, with their permission, of course, mainly looking for weapons. At first, some people were, um, were kind of apprehensive about that, but we kind of sent out a, a survey uh, with the guests to see how, how they felt about it. And close to 65% said that they, they really liked it, they feel more secure, knowing that there are not weapons inside of the shelter. After they clear that first area, which includes health assessment and the uh, uh, safety and security uh, screening, they, are, they go to the intake desk where they present their name. Uh, we have a card system, real, real nice. Uh, they can scan their card, their name pops up, and it automatically enters them into the system. Once they clear that point, and usually it's like a five, second, five to ten second transaction, and they go uh, get their bedding, their towels and their blankets for their beds. Um, they go choose any bed that's open. Nobody owns a bed. Every night, somebody can be sleeping on a different bed. Of course, they are the beds are sterilized every every morning after the guest leaves. But uh, and from that point, um, we do serve uh, hot meals at 6:30 each evening and breakfasts at 6 a.m. Uh, pretty much from that time, they're free to do what they want to do inside of the shelter. Uh, they are giving smoke breaks on, on the hour. Uh, a lot of guys play cards, a lot of guys watch TV, movies, stuff like that. So we also have case management also that uh, they can sign up for. They can come talk to their case managers and it's been, uh, it's worked pretty well. We, we put uh, more people in the, in the housing, help people find jobs uh, than ever before right now. Uh, the numbers right now are, are kind of high for, for this time of year. We can't quite place our finger on it yet, but we're in triple digits. Usually, usually something we don't see until at least late November. So we're kind of a couple of months ahead, ahead of the curve. So right now we have 250 beds. Uh, we peaked out last year at 138. We have peaked out as, as high as 186 guests. Uh, generally this time of year, people are still uh, or well, some people are still braving the elements. As we get closer to like November and definitely December, January, 
we start we will start to see more and more people filter back into inside of the shelter because it's just too cold to stay outside. So our numbers our numbers will most likely increase into 130, 140, 150. We have quite a few guests that uh, do have jobs, full-time jobs. Um, if I were to put my finger on it, I'd say 25 to 30 percent have some form of uh, gainful employment. Uh, we have people work all three shifts. Um, obviously, first shift is easy enough to leave in the morning, come back uh, at, at like four or five o'clock and then come to the shelter. Second shift, uh, we have a, a late list program where people can uh, call in and let us know that they're working. Uh, if they can't get here by 8.30, we put their name on the list. Uh, when they show up, uh, we'll check their name and we'll log them in. Third shift is probably the most difficult because um, uh, they usually sleep right after work, which is 7 o'clock in the morning, and the shelter closes at 8. So what some people will do is uh, sleep from like 4 o'clock to, to 9 o'clock and then go work their job and then try to find some more sleep after like 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. We have a pretty neat uh, uh, bathroom system and shower system. Um, uh, trailers have been modified to fit 12 bathroom stalls and 11 showers. So uh, we never run out of shower space where before uh, in some of the shelters we had, we'd have like two or three showers for like 150 people. So just imagine people fighting over that. That's not a problem here. Um, we do. Uh, uh, give people uh, hygiene products. Of course, that's always on a do donation basis. And uh, for the most part, the community kind of uh, stands behind us and they'll uh, go to, if they go on vacation, they gather up their soaps, whatever, or uh, wherever they can get them from, soap, shampoo, and stuff like that. So um, we are always looking for those items because they run out <laughs> very quick. We also have a pretty elaborate uh, book collection here, uh, which people donate to all the time. Uh, we at first were worried that the people, the books would walk off. Uh, that has happened, but it seems like it's replenished like the next day. So we are never at a loss for books. Um, also, we have AA meetings here every Tuesday. Um, and so a lot of guys have been taking advantage of that. So that, those are just some of the resources and things that people can do here inside the shelter. I am a 55-year-old man from Washington, D.C. Um, I've never been to Wisconsin before, but I uh, ended up uh, in Wisconsin because I, I came here to participate in a uh, clinical trial over at the Covance. And um, things didn't go the way I wanted them to go. I exhausted my funds. And I found myself very quickly to be in a situation where I was homeless. I Googled men's shelters in uh, Madison and um, the beacon popped up and then uh, porch light popped up. And then there was like a little orientation type deal. And they started uh, telling me all of the stuff that uh, I was, you know, would be available for if I wanted it. Not only did the porch light uh, impress me with the level of um, uh, safety checks that they were, um, you know, the, the serious level that they were taking this, but they also uh, helped me to point me in the right direction and how to get uh, vaccinated. So I was able to get uh, the vaccine. And I just want to thank the staff for uh, their volunteer. I know they, they probably do a selfless job, but and sometimes, you know, people give them a hard way to go, but uh, I, for one, am thankful for them and uh, programs like Porcelain. I'm up on the West Coast. Been there 42 years. Oh, my wife died a year and a half ago, so I came out here. I got family out here, so I worked all my life. <laughs> you know, I worked in the church. They had a shelter below it, you know, so. And after she, my wife died, I kept falling out of steps, so I'm going blind. Well, that's about it right there, you know. I've worked off. I love love of work. I'll do it again if I could. <laughs> I got family in Daneville. My niece, she comes and helps me you know, if I need anything. So, you know, she's, she's a pretty good kid. <laughs> well, I should say kid, but she's 50 some years old. Right now, I just go down the beach and drop my bag off and go feed my ducks. I go to the lake. That's why I like it here, you know. Where they live, cornfields. I'm not in the cornfields. 
I lived in the city most of my life, Seattle, you know. I love Seattle, <laughs> except for the rain. I have a tumor in the back of my head. You know. Then I got cold cancer here just a little while back, and it's starting to spread again. So. They got no chemo, so, you know, so I just got to wait. <laughs> I've already been here for about a month and a half now. I'm working on medical. They've been working a lot with me on medical. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be totally blind here in about three months, you know, so. I got my cane and stuff, so it works. It's always safe here. I've never seen any problems. Oh, you get arguments, but they don't put up with that either, so, <laughs> you know. So it's good, you know, everybody pretty much respects each other, you know. I mean, I haven't talked to a whole lot of them, you know, because I'm very unsociable sometimes, <laughs> you know. I talk to about four people, and pretty much all I ever talk to. When you lose your sight, you know, you get, you get a little bit angry sometimes. You know. I recommend a lot of people to come here, you know, just give them time to, you know, they'll work with you, but give them time to, to do their job, you know. You can't get things overnight, you know. Thank you, Preston, and guests for sharing your experience. Our goal for every guest is that they move into affordable housing with the help of the case managers at the drop-in shelter, whether that's in the community or one of Porchlight's 375 units. One building is right here. I'm standing here today because in 2019, you helped us raise $100,000 with a generous matching gift from Diane Balwig. We purchased this building of 13 one bedrooms and efficiencies that we affectionately call the Fritz in honor of our founder, Fritz Grutzner. Our goal is to renovate all 13 units. With the help of several wonderful organizations, we've already been able to renovate seven of those units. CUNA Mutual Foundation, EVU Foundation, MG&E Foundation, and the Jack DeLoss Charitable Trust. We thank you so much for your support. We still have six units to renovate. Pre-pandemic, the cost to renovate a unit was $15,000. Post-pandemic, $25,000 for each unit. So we have six units left times $25,000. That's our goal, folks, $150,000. Let's go inside and have a little tour. So here we are in a unit that needs to be completely renovated. This is a one bedroom apartment and we will redo everything. So in the kitchen, there will be new flooring, new painting, new cupboards, new sink, new refrigerator, new stove, all new appliances. It's going to look amazing. Throughout the apartment, there will be new flooring, new painting. In the bathroom, there'll be new, new bathtub, new vanity, new cupboards. This place is gonna look fabulous. But as you can see, we've got a long ways to go. And so this is what your $25,000 per unit is going to pay for. So here we are in a partially renovated unit. As you can see, we have beautiful new floors throughout the apartment. We no longer use carpet in any of porch light units. We want something durable and something that the residents can keep clean. As you go into the bathroom, we have a beautiful new vanity, sink, and cupboard. We've got a toilet here that still has yet to get in, but we've got a brand new toilet. And then in our kitchen area, you can see it's completely empty because there will be a brand new refrigerator, a brand new stove, sink, and cupboards. It's gonna look amazing. We want to have a beautiful place that people can move into and keep it nice, right? That's our goal. If they need some assistance with cleaning supplies or housekeeping, we can help them with those things. But we have to start out with a beautiful place for them to move to. So this particular unit, we've already accepted the tenant. It's a young man who lives at our safe haven program who has severe physical health disabilities. So he's actually moving into this beautiful large space with his caretaker. And so we are thankful to you and to everyone who will share tonight all of your gifts so that we can make this place amazing for him. When we decided to make this event virtual, our sponsors pivoted right along with us and became matching sponsors Without their support, this would not be possible. If you've been following along on social media, you already know today's matching sponsors are Steve Brown Apartments and BMO Harris Bank. That means these sponsors are doubling the donations made during this event. In addition, for the next three days, your donations will be doubled. Thank you, sponsors. Here's how you can donate. Go onto the Porchlight website and you can make a secure online donation. 
or you can do it the old-fashioned way and mail in a check to our administrative offices on Brook Street. If you have any questions, if you notify us during the matching sponsor days, don't worry, your donation will be doubled. Now I'd like to introduce Molly Schmidt, a member of Porchlight's Board of Directors. Hi, my name is Molly Schmidt. I have been a board member for four years and I am honored to support Porchlight's amazing work providing affordable housing, running the men's shelter, and offering other supportive services to those in need throughout Dane County. Our community is better because of the work Porchlight does. I was really proud of Porchlight's quick response and meaningful support for our most vulnerable neighbors at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic added even greater uncertainty to the lives of the houseless individuals we serve, and Porchlight stepped up to ensure the men's shelter remained a safe and healthy place to come. I had the opportunity to help screen the men for COVID-19 symptoms before they entered the shelter, which we knew was necessary to reduce spreading the illness among our guests, but also involved unknown risks for our staff and volunteers because of how little we knew about the virus at the time. Thankfully, our fears didn't stop Porchlight, or the community from rising to the challenge and continuing to provide a secure and safe place for houseless men to go. Instead of shrinking from the challenges, we asked ourselves, what more can we do? And as the organization that has run the men's shelter for almost 40 years, Porchlight continues to serve those in our community who need our support the most. I hope you will join me in continuing to ask, what more can I do? And please consider donating today to support Porchlight's important work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Molly, and our wonderful board of directors. You've heard why you should give. Now let me show you who's been impacted by your generosity. Duane is one of the many veterans helped through Porchlight programs, who is in need of affordable housing and support services. The Veterans Transitional Housing Program is a program that provides transitional housing to marginalized and justice impacted veterans. But well, we provide a plethora of services. We have case management through uh, Vega Gerker, who is an outstanding individual. Uh, she helps individuals provide, out of, we provide housing resources, employment resources. I personally provide paralegal services, uh, counseling. We, we run the gamut of what our veterans need in order to be successful. So whatever you need is what we are going to provide for you. The main goal of the program is to assist our veterans in obtaining secure housing. Um, some of our veterans, for whatever reasons, has various challenges in maintaining secure housing as well as obtaining secure housing. So what we do is we try and ascertain what those needs are, and then we meet those needs by utilizing community resources and services we partner with the VA as well as other uh, orders, community stakeholder organizations in the area of Madison to help provide those services. Frankly, bluntly, to be pointed, matter of fact, what we do is provide our veterans with what they need to be successful. A number of our marginalized and justice impacted veterans have had challenges in determining where they're going to lay their head at night and where they're going to eat their food. And you can't possibly hope to be successful if you don't have basic nutrition and sustenance. So we take that off the table. You no longer have to be concerned about where your next meal is coming from. Because I have news for you. You're not just going to get a meal. You're going to get a banquet. And that's the importance of our uh, food program here at the Federal Traditional Housing Program. We deal primarily, strictly, with the needs of our justice impacted and marginalized veteran communities. Um, the VA requires that VTHP, Veteran Transitional Housing Program, have a certified peer support specialist on staff, of which I am. And I can specifically identify with some of the challenges that our marginalized veterans face. For instance, as a veteran, many of us suffer from post traumatic stress disorder or various other issues that came about that came about during our time in service. And these issues sometimes have a deleterious effect on us, particularly in society, in an effective manner. So what I do is I try and identify those issues and put those veterans in touch with various treatment options, employment options, uh, housing options, communication options, options, period. And that's what separates our program 
from the other programs in the area. The other programs, they primarily focus on the issue. We focus on the cause. My name is Dwayne Blue. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I was born in St. Mary's Hospital, just up the street. Uh, I had a good life here in Madison. I went to the Madison High School. I served in the Army for two years. I uh, was stationed at Fitzsimmons Medical Center in Denver, Colorado. I got involved in drugs. My health, I took a beat down uh, for my decision after the last series of strokes, cause uh, they was on me. Uh, my family said, you're gonna die. So I had to uh, make some adjustment, uh, get in the ground, you know? The reason I did go to a porch like to find my own place and to uh, gain some independence. I've been at the Bats house now about three uh, three months. Uh, it was a blessing to get there. Um, I had a social worker that they assigned for me because of the stroke. And I told him I wanted my own place. And uh, he contacted a porch light. Uh, they gave me an opportunity. Appointments, uh, a transportation, obviously a food, uh, and mobilization and encouragement. Uh, that's what that house does for a lot of people, especially me. Uh, people had uh, given up. Uh, it makes me uh, remember the good things and what I can accomplish. Sharon and Vega helped me out a lot because my memory is as bad, but uh, uh, I got a good routine. A breakfast every morning <laughs> at 7.30. Uh, I got a routine where uh, uh, I eat, or go back to sleep, uh, work out, uh, try to uh, visit uh, family members and my mama, uh, uh, all the people that uh, I neglected before. Uh, I didn't want to see them because I didn't feel good about myself. I'm more positive uh, for sure. Uh, feel like I'm contributing more uh, as a, a result. Uh, try to be a good person, uh, be a, the best that I can be. Uh, you can't be that unless you help other people. I'm excited about a lot of things, especially uh, going forward. forward uh, Porsche guy like gonna help me get a job also. So uh, that's one thing I'm looking forward to. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you for sharing your story. If you wanna stay connected with Porchlight, you can do that in a couple ways. You can like our Facebook page and you can go on our website and sign up for our e-newsletter. On there, we share many different needs that we have throughout the year for our guests. Holiday season is approaching. What's a great gift? Porchlight product gift basket. You can reach out to Drew, our kitchen manager. You can get a beautiful gift basket for your mother-in-law, for your coworker, for your neighbor. Thank you for supporting this wonderful program that hires formerly homeless people with disabilities. And we believe very strongly in the power of work. Don't forget, today and the next three days, all of your donations are doubled. Thank you to our matching sponsors. Thank you for joining us today. Stay safe and healthy.